Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the most ignoble of all vegetables, the cabbage. In 1642, Sir Richard Cabbage was Oh, I am the king. Sure, sure. I'll tell your story then. The year is 1318. The setting is England. The more specific setting is Oxford. So I was sitting there talking about the dishonourable cabbage when a man showed up claiming to be the king. Observe, however, that he was not the king. The king was Edward II. This guy was John Daedrus. He said that as a baby, his nanny lost track of him and let him go frolicking in the muck of the courtyard, where a sow decided to chomp off his ear. Now, if you're a parent, you wouldn't be much pleased if your baby came back from the nursery missing an ear, especially if that baby was possibly an heir to the throne. So, this nanny decided to switch babies, and he, the real king, was given to some commoners, whilst a lowborn baby was given back to the king, with the parents supposedly not noticing. Remember that this is a lie, and that John just wanted to be king. Well, it was a good enough lie, since many people in Oxford got behind him. It helped that he also looked somewhat like King Edward. It also helped that Edward had recently lost the Battle of Bannockburn in Scotland, and who wants a loser for a king? Well, he challenged Edward to single combat and um, he was rejected. So John's whole line of argument was that Edward liked to dig ditches and thatch roofs in his spare time, which of course are peasant activities. He also liked to row and drive chariots in his youth, which no rich man would do. Let's try that ourselves. You like knitting? Peasant. You like baking? Peasant. You like gardening? Peasant. <clears throat> uh, well, that's not to say that Edward didn't indulge in the finer things in life, like having a pet camel. He also had a pet lion in his younger days, which he took on campaign in Scotland, presumably because it was not willing to be rowed by him. In 1312, his court had an Italian snake charmer, and the next year, his court featured 54 nude French dancers. So, yeah, John's claim about him being a peasant in disguise doesn't really hold up very well. When Edward invited John to his royal court, he greeted him with, Welcome, my brother, since he was the king of comedy. Edward planned to install him as a jester, but John just went on some tirade about how he wasn't the real king. Edward's wife, Queen Isabella, was having none of it, though, and was supposedly troubled beyond measure. John was then put on trial for sedition. At which point he said that his story was less than true. However, John had an ace up his sleeve and said that his cat had put him up to it. Because as Schrodinger once said, when is a cat not a cat? When the cat is the devil. According to John, the devil cat had talked to him whilst he was having a stroll on Christchurch Meadow in Oxford and told him to take a dog, a cat and a cockerel with him to the palace to declare himself king. Oh, anyway, he was found guilty and was dragged about by a horse. Then he was hanged and his body was burnt. Oh, and his cat was hanged too, for being a devil cat and all. Modern historians say that John was clearly a bit mentally unsound, and I mean, it's quite hard to make a counter-argument. But it is also a signal of growing unrest in England. The country was still, largely, going through the Great Famine and Scotland was up to stuff. Rebellion in Wales didn't help either. Add on to that that Edward had angered his lords and his closeness to Piers Gaveston, and it was not all going well for him. At least he was able to right his ship and kept on ruling successfully for decades to come. Right? So where were we? That's it. Cabbages. Oh, would you look at that? We've run out of time. I've got a kingdom to claim. Well then. <laughs>